what are we modeling for the next generation, for our daughters, for our sons, you know, and the connection between integrative health and beauty, you know, between like, um, I know that, you, you know, you've got training, you've got fuel, you've got all beauty, you've got all of these things along with like mindset and mental training in your model, right? A lot of people don't have those three things. They're like, okay, I want mindset, I want mental training, but they're not connecting it to the air you breathe, the food you eat, the movement in your body. It's very hard to age well if you're not understanding that the, you know, it's a holistic exercise and that integration is what beauty is about as we get older. Because believe me, we slow down. It doesn't matter how like badass we are, you know, in our thirties and forties, we slow down. Things start to sag. The beauty starts to fade. Your makeup doesn't even sit well anymore. Your hair, you know what it was, but you can still be beautiful. So, you know, that's something I would love for us and for just more women to explore. Welcome to Black Belt Beauty Radio, a podcast fueled by a passion to support your journey in developing your most beautiful and optimal performance in life. Each episode is driven with the intention to elevate your mind. When we elevate our mind, we elevate our life. So get ready. It's time to rise. This episode is brought to you in partnership with Beauty Counter. You guys, as a beauty expert and makeup pro of over 20 years, I have legitimately sifted and sorted through endless amounts of beauty products from skincare to makeup, you name it, I've touched it. And, you know, high performance is always a priority to me. You know, when you're working on clients who are on the red carpet or accepting awards on live shows like the Oscars, things of that nature, there really is no room for error when it comes to performance. But as a total, you know, lover of health, you know, over the past decade, I became highly conscious about you know, the health aspect of products too, and really trying to steer away from skincare and makeup products that, you know, have chemicals and fragrances and ultimately health disruptors. So when I found Beauty Counter, you guys, I started playing with their skincare and their makeup products on me. I was so happy with the results. Not only, you know, did they totally deliver, but I legitimately felt better putting these products onto my skin. You know, what you put on your skin is totally affecting your health. And it's so important to really realize that. Not to mention the brand is really health conscious for the world, and I love that too, but that's just me. So check it out. You guys can now shop my personal favorites on blackbeltbeauty.com from Beauty Counter. You just got to go to the shop section, go to beauty, and you will find my favorites. And I'm continuously adding new products there as I discover more because the brand is just constantly you know, creating new amazing skincare products and makeup products. So as I learn about them, And as I try them and love them, I'm sharing them on the site. So check it out. Go to blackbeltbeauty.com, go to the shop beauty section and shop the beauty counter page from there. Let me know what you think. I'd love your feedback. And if you ever have questions about beauty, you know where to find me. DM me, Roxy Look or Black Belt Beauty. Lots of love, you guys. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Black Belt Beauty Radio. This week's amazing guest is Carolyn Mabubi. Carolyn is a highly successful leadership and life coach. She is also a competitive ultra runner. Carolyn has a story that inspires the idea that you can create a life from what truly lights you up at any point in your life you decide to. At the young age of 14, she landed her first taste in the fashion world. In fact, she begged the manager of Ann Taylor to give her a part-time job as a sweeper. Fast forward from sweeping the high fashion boutique floors to just a few years later, Carolyn launched Gianni Versace on Rodeo Drive. It was from there that she led a rich and powerful professional life within the fashion industry by serving three decades in management and executive roles at four of the top fashion companies in the world. While her life looked absolutely glamorous from the outside perspective, Carolyn has opened up that in her 40s, she felt lost. 
Her career trajectory, health, and relationships were a mess, even though her professional life was one many envied. In the pursuit of her happiness, she hired her own life coach. She became enamored by the transformation she encountered in her professional life and wanted to encourage others to do the same for themselves. She felt right at home coaching. With recognition and status in the fashion world most wouldn't even dare to dream of, Carolyn courageously shut the door on that part of her life to become a life coach, and she hasn't looked back since. And as if that huge life move wasn't a big enough challenge, it was also in that transitional chapter of her life that she started running ultra mountain races. Those are 50 to 100 mile races, you guys. It's no joke. In the mountains. With a background story of fleeing revolution, immigrating, being a single parent, losing a job, and managing chronic pain, Carolyn's story of resiliency is one many look up to and can resonate with all on some level. Her work as a life coach today is to allow co-creation to happen. She provides the space for two people to come together to increase vitality and to design a purposeful future with velocity, one intentional step at a time. You guys, this talk holds an incredible blend of energy that is both elevating and calming. And I feel like that's just one perfect way to sum up our beautiful and inspiring guest today. So before I hit play, I would love to ask you for some support by subscribing to this podcast and giving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes. Your support here allows this podcast to grow and to get this supportive content further out into the world. Additionally, if you love this episode, please screen grab it, share it up on your IG stories and tag both Carolyn and I with a note on what you loved about it. Our IG handles are in the show notes. So without any more words, you guys, it's time to hit play and let you enjoy this beautiful talk with beautiful Carolyn Mabubi. Enjoy. Hi, Carolyn. (laughs) Hey, Roxy. I'm so excited to be here with you. Thank you for making time to be here with all of us. Um, Your story, your energy, everything about you so far has just been such a beautiful gift to take in. And I'm really, really excited to get to know you more through our conversation right now and to share you with everybody listening. How are you today? I'm great. I'm great. And likewise. You know, I am um, very intrigued and taken with your story and inspired. And, you know, you and I have a bunch of things in common. So, um, you know, it's really nice to be connecting with someone that I feel this kind of affinity for. Oh, thank you. I agree. Um, you know, there's so many areas to go with you in this conversation. Um, mindset is a mindset's everything, I think, to both of us, right? You are you are a life coach, a leadership coach. I feel like it's also appropriate to call you a success coach. So many titles. <laughs> Basically, you help your clients win in life. Is that a good way to summarize it? Um, yes. Yes, I think that's a great way to put it. Um, I think the whole coach thing, you're right. It's it's a word that has, in a way, uh, lost its meaning. Mm-hmm. But for me, it's important to tie it back to where it comes from, which is not um, the world of medicine. Let's say like therapy or being a psychiatrist or psychologist, you know, really comes from that world. Coaching comes from the world of athletics and entertainment and business. So in that way, I think that you're right because it is about being more successful and winning um, at you know the game that you're playing. It just so happens we are all playing this uh, game of life, and we could all use a little support from somebody who's not smarter than you, but just maybe has a little something more to offer. I love that. It's so beautiful, powerfully put. You have. One of my favorite styles of stories, you know, you, for the better part of your career life, you worked in the fashion industry. Yes, I did. Oh and my God. T- <laughs> it's amazing. It's, and at a, a, you know, very top level. And it's, it's fun for me because, you know, as a, 
celebrity makeup artist. And I hate kind of framing it that way. I just have to do it because now, especially there's so many avenues of makeup. Um, Mm -hmm. but it just, so it kind of shortcuts for brevity purposes, purposes, it's Mm -hmm. celebrity makeup artist, but you know, fashion is involved entertainment. So I very much understand that world, at least from that perspective. And it's, you know, it's funny because it's different from this world. And yet there are so many parallels or rather maybe a better way to put it is skill transfers that, you know, I know that I've taken from that part of my career life into this part of my career life. And I know that that has been so similar for you. And I would love to, if you're okay with it, to kind of start from that, that area of your life, you know, where you were, you know, in this fashion industry world and, you know, how you were, transitioning or what led you to transition from very long, you know, that's a lot of life to be putting into one career Avenue to then evolve. I, I, you know, not pivot, but rather evolve into your life coaching business where you are now. Yeah. Okay. So (laughs) I did start young, so I'm not 85, but I am 55, which is not you know, you really can say that it is a second half of life. And, you know, hopefully in this conversation, we can talk about what you call 360 beauty and what is such a passion for me, um, which is how do we age beautifully? How do we age? What does that mean when you can't count on the outside beauty so much anymore, which inevitably happens to all of us? So I did start at 16. I opened my first business at 16, and I had that for 17 years. Um, Then went ahead and was working with, you know, a lot of the top brands. But to answer your question specifically, the, the skill, the desire, the passion, the kind of connected line between all of those years, what I did in fashion, and what I'm doing today is service. That really is it. It's service. So for me, it was never about Versace or Gucci or Bulgari or uh, jewelry or handbags or clothes, although um, you can't help but love that stuff when, you know, but I was never even really a consumer. You know, I don't shop. I don't really consume. For me, it was the human interaction and being, I just felt like, oh my God, I got so lucky in life that I get to every single day interact with people who sort of, they love this, this, this container. Mm -hmm. Now the container could have been, you know, Versace or it could have been Gucci, but I always knew that it just never was about what was being sold. It was never about the clothes because these people, they didn't need anything. They just didn't need another handbag, but they came in and I understood from a very, I think a young age that what they were coming in for was to be seen. It was to be heard. It was to be understood. It was to feel safe. And I was able to develop that talent through those years. So for me, Yes, coaching is maybe a different world, like you're saying, Mm -hmm. but you're right. It's not really a pivot. It's a kind of, okay, how can I do exactly what I was doing before, but on a more elevated level? For me today, I'm not saying, I'm not putting myself or anyone else down who was in that that world. Um, Most of my clients are people who were my bosses and colleagues in that world. And so I'm able to help them with the understanding of the nuances of that world, of, you know, the challenges, what it means to build a business. These things I learned for sure in those years. But the thread for my own personal evolution is, is, can be summed up in one word, service. I serve then, I serve now. 
I love that. And you, and I think another angle just to add, I'm, cause I visually, I'm such a visual person. I go there. I'm like, you and you were, you were really uh, um, accessing more joy for them too. Right. It's like, they're coming to you to feel all those things, to gain all those things that you just mentioned. And there's joy in that process. Right. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. Joy and a sense of um, really safety. Mm-hmm. So happens that that okay, it was inside of a store environment, or if I went to them, or if my team went to them, but it was still a relationship that was grounded mm-hmm. on trust mm-hmm. and safety. They knew that. I mean, what could be more, in a way, vulnerable than sitting for hours in a dressing room, yeah. it's sort of like naked. Uh, I, you know what? It's such a, I could draw a parallel because I'm seeing you in your most naked face when I'm doing makeup, you know, and then having to put trust in me to, for you to be at your ultimate representation of feeling well, like beautiful, um, for, to the outside world. And so I, I so deeply connect with you. It's, it's, it's amazing actually. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, totally. Someone is showing up. It, you know, so vulnerable, and it's a it's an honor, of course, a responsibility, mm-hmm. but also a privilege. Yeah. You know, when my clients thank me, and I say it's my privilege, I mean it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's really a privilege to have another human being um, put their trust in you. Yeah. Now, the work, as you know, because you're a coach yourself, mm-hmm. the work is not about me. The work is about what happens when two people come together and they co-create. So when someone thanks me, I'm very quick to say, hey, you know, we both brought something. Let's thank the work. The Mm -hmm. work itself is very powerful, but only when both people come together. Um, I love that. You know, them coming together and making that investment. It's, you know, it's courageous work. Mm Mm-hmm. No, you're right. It's so true. And I really, it's, you know, I think for me, the fa- my, I've always been a team player, you know, I don't know about you and I'd love to know actually, but I come from a big family, you know, there's five siblings and we're all just so very close. And, and I, and I know that that has really generated this love uh, for being in, in a team, you know, an operating team. Was that the case for you? Do you come from? Very much so. I don't come from um, a big nuclear family. I have only one sister, but I have maybe a hundred members of my immediate family living within a couple of square miles. This is, of course, it has to do with my background being Iranian. Yeah, it is for sure that sense of like intergenerational connect connectedness, where my grandmother, um, you know, even to this day. I wouldn't say babysits because my children are now 18 and 20 years old, but she did babysit my children and they have a bond with each other that, you know, is separated by three generations. So, you know, I would say that that's at the bottom of Mm -hmm. my sense of, uh, you know, uh, there is a bigger picture here than myself. Yes. Um, But also I developed teams again, going back to my, other career, I developed teams for so many years. And, you know, leaders know that you can't do anything by yourself. Totally. (laughs) It's so true. It's so true. You really, you can't scale, you can't develop, you can't, you can't be in your zone of genius if you are trying to do everything. Bottom line. Mm, You're right. It's very limited. Yeah. You know, for people like us and people that we coach who really let's admit it. They're high achieving. Mm-hmm. They're ambitious. They're going, going, going. They want more. Yeah. You know? um, this is a really key understanding to have mm-hmm. because many of us, many of us, especially growing up in the last couple of generations feel like we should do everything alone. Mm. Yeah. This is well, really it feels, it feels the most reliable, you know, I, I, you know, but it's, it's not, it's not really how it works, you know, just is it. Yes, you're right. It feels reliable because of our attachment to perfectionism mm. because you feel like, Oh, 
if I do it myself, at least I have control. At least I know it's going to be done my way. It's going to be done perfectly. Um, and this is one of the things I work on with my clients because I would say 70% of them, um, the thing that's getting in the way of their bigger, what you call win mm-hmm. in life is, is just perfectionism, you yeah. know, plain yeah. and simple. It's always riding shotgun right there with their, you know, uh, ambition and it's getting in the way. Yeah. That's, it's, yeah, it's a really important code to crack, I think, to really take things to the next level because you need, you know, I, I, it's funny, people um, often sometimes, you know, have this perfectionism for me. I'm more interested in process and effort than perfectionism, you know, like, yeah, I always want to win and I always want to crush it, but I understand that, you know, it's that repetitive effort that creates the overall, you know, uh, quality elements, right? So it's, it's, and I, and I, you know, you have to get to this understanding, I think through, through process, right? Through trial and error, through lesson. And I think that when you, are able to get there when you have assistance to get there, like you do with your clients. I think it really, it's such a, it's such an MVP in, in creating this, um, fulfilling life where you are the leader in your life and you are able to, you know, hit the targets that you want to hit and feel good in the process. Absolutely. Can I expand on what you just said? Please. It's something just I've learned in this process. You know, when you first, become a coach and I've, I have like a number of certifications. So you go to school, you don't have to, but Mm -hmm. I did. Yeah. The thing you hear over and over again is goals, 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 you know, Mm -hmm. people coach you for goals, you know, clarify the goals, go for the goals, strategize about the goals, which I did for many years. And I will tell you what you just said Mm -hmm. about the process Mm -hmm. that only that understanding came to me years into doing this work. Yeah. I realized that if I can shift my clients from goal orientation mm-hmm. to process orientation, mm-hmm. everything changes because goals, you know, they can be intimidating, mm-hmm. they can be realistic, mm-hmm. they're dependent so much on the things, a bunch of things we don't have control over. Totally. There is a really good chance that no matter how hard you work, you're going to feel like a fail, not a win, right? Yes. Yes. I love this. Yes. So what to do. What to yeah. do. And, yeah. you know, it was a process because my clients stay with me usually for years. And mm-hmm. there I am kind of mid, mid coaching with them. And we started out with goals and I'm, I'm, I've had this insight and I want, and I realize that I'm not serving them if I stay on this goal path. Yeah. And how to shift them to process. Mm-hmm. It's doable and it's been life changing for them and for me because, like you just said, a process can have you experiencing a win mm-hmm. constantly. Exactly. And it's in your hands. Yes. So, yeah. you know, for example, I have this other life as an ultra runner, right? So yes. I train, look, these are, these races, sometimes you don't finish for reasons that are really out of your control or yeah. whatever, you know, but if I can make my wins be defined by my process, by my training, then when I get to the race, it's like carrying so much weight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I do. By the way, it doesn't serve us. All of that feeling, all that weight of like, got to come through. You know, this is it. All the training that I did is for this moment. Oh. You know, if your win, if our win is defined by one goal, mm-hmm. You know, it's there's a pretty good chance that we're we're not going to um, experience that deep, sustainable sense mm-hmm. of being a winner. Totally, it's like I always say, it's like winning on the way to winning. That's what I want to do, and that's the internal 
as you're working on the external, right? So it's like who you are in the process and how you're, you know, witnessing yourself through the process and supporting yourself through the process and all of that as you're on the way to, because you're right, Carolyn, you're not always going to have, you could have the best intention. You could do everything right and you can miss the shot. And if your entire win and worthiness and all the things that go with it are we're on just making the shot, well, now you feel like shit, you failed, you know, but if you are, you know, honoring and paying attention and, and, and embracing the process on the way, I mean, it's just, a, it's, yeah, it's a deeper, uh, it's a richer experience and it's a deeper understanding that I think, I know, actually, I don't even think I know, uh, allows you to continue to be a high performer and continue to take things to the next level and continue to actually, I, I believe win on an even larger scale. It's like when you're looking down at your life from up here, even if you've missed some shots in the way, it's like overall, there's so much more fulfillment and so many more wins because of everything that you just so eloquently just shared right now. So it's, yeah, it's so spot on. It's powerful. I want to invite you as a powerful voice, as a coach, as somebody that has a following that people listen to, um, to really like come on board with me to change the dynamic of what it means to win, Mm -hmm. you know, because I think that we have those of us that are high achieving Mm -hmm. have really in a way, me more than you, because I'm older than you have been set up to fail. Mm-hmm. You know, we've been set up by our definition of what winning means mm-hmm. to spend so much time on this hamster wheel, yeah. you know, and, and not understand that coaching is about who you're being. Mm-hmm. Great. I'll show you what to do. Nobody can do it better. I will show you what to do, like strategy, tactics, mm-hmm. tools, skills, but that's not the deepest value of our work, mm-hmm. right? As coaches, as a voice, as a leader that you are, I think the deepest value is to set an example mm-hmm. of being. Who are we being? You say this in your, in your tagline, I think, where you said the life you're living is who you are. Yeah. Something I'm rephrasing. You, you know? are the life you're living. You, right. You are the yeah. life you're living. Exactly. Yeah. So that sense of... To, to bring people with us, even mm-hmm. if they come in through the door, mm-hmm. come in coaching through the door of action and doing mm-hmm. and achieving and specific goals, to in time give them the experience of the kind of vertical coaching that has them going up the soul line, not just their goal line. Oh, that's good, girl. You know what I mean? That has them, okay, we have this goal line where we're growing up as we're going. We're growing mm-hmm. up. What about waking up? Oof. What about waking up? I think that's, you know, when people come to me for business coaching, which mm-hmm. I do and I'm happy to do, mm-hmm. I'm very clear with them that I am a coach that works on the level of personal transformation. Mm-hmm. If you're not willing to bring the whole of yourself Mm -hmm. to this work, make the connections, get integrated as a human. Mm -hmm. I'm not the coach for you. Yeah. And And I I was drawn to what you do and really was excited about this conversation because I know this is who you are. I know this is what you do. I know this is your, um, you know, these are your core values. You know, thank you. It's leading by example. And, you know, when I think about your life you know, all the years you spent in this one industry. I can't even imagine the challenges on so many levels of transitioning, of evolving into a whole nother career, like what people you love had to say financially. I mean, just on every level, I'm thinking about all of what you had to had to manage and, you know, the agility, emotional agility, the emotional discipline, the mindset, um, and, and, and to, to evolve into this new career life that you are absolutely living with so much success, you know, and, and you are so, you know, your clients are, are, are being, are basically gaining so much from this, evolved Carolyn and this new 
this, I mean, honestly, Carolyn, it's you living from your highest self, right? It's you living from your fullest potential. And I, I just feel like when I think about leading by example and having all this knowledge and this wisdom, it, it, it's while you went to school and you got certified, which is wonderful. And I did too with health coach, but honestly, straight up, I just did that because it made me feel good. Right. But I, <laughs> like nobody cares. Nobody cares. This is what I, I coach other coaches and they're like, you know, got to do this, become a master of that, got to do that. I'm like, nobody cares. No, no. Don't do it. Put it on your signature. Call yourself a master, whatever. <laughs> nobody cares. <laughs> the other thing too, though, the, the, the ultra runner, mommy, I mean, you're like all of this, your life, you know, you take all these incredible, powerful evolutions, chapters, experiences, um, pieces of your life that have made you the woman that you are today to be leading by example and to be, be able to actually really guide your, and not just your clients. I mean, I feel like it's, you know, I always say that we are more than, uh, I'm more than Roxanne. You're more than Carolyn. We're more than humans. We are an experience and every single human that we come into contact with, we are giving them an experience, right? We're giving people an experience right now. So the experience that you are is the result of not just the life that you have lived, but how you have maneuvered and evolved throughout it. And I think it's just, there's so many pieces that I want to, to talk about in this process with you, because when I think, you know, those listening to this podcast are always always, you know, looking for a few things, you know, how to, uh, expand their mind to, to grow and to be fortified with strength and to be capable to feel great in their body and to keep going for, you know, to live from their fullest potential and from their highest path of life. And when I think about, you know, how challenging it must've been for you to have transitioned from fashion life to coaching, to being a mommy, to, how did you even get into ultra running? Like, that's a whole thing. You know, I know that you've been managing chronic pain at the same time. I mean, there's so many elements that I know are going to be so supportive to those listening. And it's, a, you know, I really would just love to kind of pick your brain a little bit too about uh, a lot of things actually, <laughs> but that how you maneuvered through that transition and how you managed the external voices, your internal voice, all of that. Because I know that that's where a lot of people struggle. Right now in COVID, people have a lot of time to, to really sit with themselves and go, wait, is the life that I've been living the life that I want to be living? Okay, well, if it's not, how do I actually move forward into the things that do light me up inside. I don't know. I'm scared. What are they going to think? All of those things. So if we can touch on that, I think that would be a really powerful piece to add to this conversation. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, look, I wish I could say I woke up one day and I was just like, oh, I'm going to have this other career and I'm just going to like, I'm such a badass. I'm going to make it happen. <laughs> it was not that way. It was not that way. It was a slow painful and ugly crash landing of my career, of my body, of my mm, personal relationships, of my health. And this was probably started in my late 30s and went well into my 40s. Mm. So... <laughs> Let me just be clear that that's, that was the beginning. That was the ground zero. That, it was not like, oh, yeah, I know how to do this. Yeah. And why? Why did I have that? Because I was living life on autopilot. Mm -hmm. Because as much as I was always, I mean, really since 12 years old, I was reading The Road Less Traveled, then I became a Buddhist, then I became a Kabbalist, then I studied with teachers, but it was always information, mm. always information. Read books, listen to podcasts, like feel smarter. Yeah. Was I living smarter? No. You know, there was like this, there was this, my brain that was 
getting all the information and getting like, felt like it was getting bigger, Mm. but there was no results necessarily in terms of true transformation Mm. in in who I was being. And the result of just staying on that path of just go, 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 never slow down, do the next thing, you know, um, was that really I crashed. I mean, I reached a place where career-wise I hit a ceiling Mm -hmm. and now I know that it's because I just wasn't loving what I was doing. But then I was thinking, you'll understand this as a mindset coach. My mindset was more of a victim mindset. It was like, oh, you know, I'm a woman, I'm getting older, you know, they can hire somebody for half the price, blah, blah, blah. And I just, I had, I had married and um, didn't feel like I had chosen successfully that I had a successful marriage. I, I, you know, didn't feel I was successful as a single parent. Um, but I was always hustling, moving fast. Yeah. And I will tell you, one of the things that I work on now with my clients is to take them from speed, mm-hmm. which most of us have, to velocity. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know if you... if. Mm-hmm. if but please elaborate. They don't know the difference. Speed is just moving fast. You could be on a treadmill and be moving very, very fast, but not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. Velocity has us going in a direction. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I had no velocity. I, w- I just had speed. It was just like, go, 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 go. And I think a lot of people will relate to this. One way or another, you will crash. Mm-hmm. For me, it start what's... What made me stop was literally my physical um, self where, you know, I always ran, you know, get up at four in the morning, run five miles, take a shower, go to work, you know, do this, do that, do everything. And one day I was running and literally it felt like it happened in one day. And I was like, ow. And I thought, oh, what's that? That was really the beginning of um, pain that to this day I have. Oh, wow. Except for, for years, I was like just running from doctor to doctor going, okay, fix it. Yep. I don't have time for this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have time for this. And, you know, the, the surgeon would say, well, you need back surgery. And the chiropractor would say, you need it adjusted every day. And the nerve doctor would say, oh, it's your nerves that are being pinched. And I realized, oh. If everybody has a different opinion, then nobody knows. Sure. Yep. And so I want to say that I really did hit what, for me anyway, was a very low place. Mm -hmm. And I got help. I got help. That's how I made you know, the 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 move upwards Mm -hmm. towards a new life. And it was um slow, Mm -hmm. but it was committed, but the only thing that I would say that if I had not done it, I wouldn't be where I am today was hire my own coach yeah. and, and get help yeah. and just begin to understand that, oh, wow, there is a different way mm-hmm. that we could live. Was, and- it a, was it a hard decision? I'm sorry to cut you off, but I just want to ask, I think it's an important question. Was it a hard decision for you to, uh, to decide to hire a coach? It was a hard decision for me to get help. It goes okay. back to what you were saying about, you know, what we were saying earlier about perfection. Sure. I, I mean, I needed, you know, in my head, the belief mm-hmm. that was in the driver's seat was fucking figure it out. Yeah. Just figure it out, you know? Yep. And so, yeah, it was hard. It was hard to say, you know, I I can't figure it out. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's like a, it's like a moment of vulnerability and, 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 and then ultimately surrender. And then, but you, I love that you, you went for it. And I, I'm so happy. I just asked you that question because I'm sure there's a lot of people right now who, who toggle with the idea of, you know, should I, should I not now them more than ever too, there's all kinds of coaches, but it's like, man, I'm with you. I mean, listen, the easiest reference for me is like, Michael Jordan has a coach. The top performers in the world have a coach for a reason, you know? Yeah. 
And so, you know, it makes perfect sense to me that you in that state, in that moment, when you finally decide, I'm going to, I'm going to move forward, I'm going to get help, that that would help you to, to rise to the next level in your life. So I'm going to let you pick it right back up there, but I really wanted to, to ask you uh, that question because I feel like, you know, people do that. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And one way that I've really found around that is it has to do with my business model. And this is the model that I teach to my coaches, which is never sell, always serve. Mm -hmm. Because if you serve and give people an experience of coaching first, then it's not risky. Mm. It doesn't feel risky to them. So I was very lucky because I connected with a coach who had the same um, business model. So we met... And by the time I signed on, it didn't feel risky. It didn't feel like, oh, wow, I'm weak, you know, or I was going against some terrible, you know, some big belief or what's going to happen when I hire this person. It was very much, we had a couple of sessions, deep sessions already. I knew what coaching was. I knew who I was, you know, going to be working with. And um, there was no selling on his part. So he just served me powerfully ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I signed on. So I was lucky in that way. But you know, there are different kinds of coaching. I Mm -hmm. did go in just saying, hey, I want to be, I I want coaching around health and I want coaching around career. I did say that. Mm. But again, he was, he was like, cool, we can do all that. But you have to understand that if you want to coach with me, I'm a transformational coach. We're going to look at your whole life. And boy, oh boy, did I get lucky because, um, it is about living an integrated <laughs> life if we want to be healthy. You no, know, you for don't. whatever issues I have mm-hmm. uh, mechanically that cause me pain, yeah, they're still there. But it doesn't matter. I couldn't possibly. I wasn't. I wasn't nearly as physically able at thirty-five than I am at fifty-five. I love you know that. So I act cool. do. I do at forty-two. <laughs> I'm kicking my 32 year old's ass, (laughs) but it's not about like, so it's not about, Oh, well, you know, some doctor came in and fixed me. No, because God knows so many of us have this issue. We don't know why this kind of like mechanical issues that lead to chronic pain, years of eating, I guess, maybe a certain way, a certain lifestyle. Yeah. But you can shift Mm -hmm. your mind around it, Mm -hmm. which shifts your whole experience of pain. Mm. Mm. Yeah. It's almost like you reframe what the pain even means to you, which then allows you to move through it differently. I imagine. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't know if that answered your question. No, it beautifully. Yours. I love, I love listening to you. You, yes, no, it was very, uh, you articulated that perfect. And my mind, I'm, I'm wondering like how, you know, you, you, you meet this coach, you start doing the work, you have this pain, you're getting ready to move into what would be the next chapter of your, your career life. When and how, and excuse me if I'm jumping too far, you back me up wherever you want to. But my thought is like, with that pain, when is, and how does ultra running come into the pain? <laughs> Because can you explain what ultra run? We've had Sally McCray on that uh, podcast, but for, for listeners Sally. new, she's so wonderful. Oh my God. It was a cackle fest the whole time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> our laughs are so similar, but we, uh, if, for those who aren't familiar with what ultra running is, because I know there's different forms of it and you are specific, you, you race in the mountains and the hills, right? Yes. Yeah. So ultra running is running any distance that's above a marathon distance. So, you know, 50 kilometers, 50 miles, 100 kilometers, 100 miles. Now there's 200 mile races, you know, over days. It is, I would say 99% of the time in the mountains. So there's this element of, you know, elevation, a lot of times altitude, there's sky races, which have to be above a certain altitude. You have to cover a certain elevation. It's, um, it's on trails and the training of it often, I'm sure Sally told you, is being alone. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're, you're running alone in the mountains. So it has a very different feel to it mm-hmm. than, than running. I mean, I don't consider myself, I, I, I couldn't, I don't think I could run three miles on pavement or sidewalk anymore. You know? um, I have to tell you, I totally understand this because 
I, you know, I live at the beach, it's my backyard and my running and I run throughout the week, um, is, is barefoot in the sand, in the deep sand. And I, it's usually between on a lower day, it's a three mile. I'm not a high mile runner, but on a, usually a, it's, it's a four to six mile run, 10 K. And, uh, you know, for a moment in, in, in the quarantine, they shut the backyard down and it was, it was, it was, it was, crushed me, you know, because this is something that I, I love and I, it's constant in my life, you know? Um, and so I started running in the street and girl, let me tell you, and I grew up running, by the way, I was a competitive runner growing up, you know, and as a kid and putting on shoes, I could do track sprints. That's different hill sprints, but going miles on the concrete with the, oh no, versus wind in my hair, ocean breeze, sand. It's, I so understand, although I don't do trail running, but that nature, it's the same. Uh, yeah, my gosh, it's cathartic. It's a, sport. it's a different sport. Yeah. You know, when you ask, how did I make that pivot again? Yeah. Kind of an embarrassing story. It doesn't make me look good, but I used to be like, just run, run. You know, I was, I was not on the track team. I was like, it was more like, getting my aggression out, running. I wasn't ru- loving running for the sake of it. It was like, get it done. Five miles, six miles, go to work, you know? And I used to run around the UCLA track as well. And also the park where I live, around the park where I live. And there was this man for years, years, we're talking decades, because I've lived in the same neighborhood for like 40 years. And he's kind of older, mm-hmm. kind of crooked, Mm -hmm. When he would run, he would run like this, but man, he showed up every day and he ran, he ran slow. He ran with obvious pain, but he ran Mm. and he had a smile on his face always. And I would run circles around him literally (laughs) And my world of like in my 35, 43 year old world of like, I'm such a badass. (laughs) I can do everything. Yeah, I saw myself as superior mm. to pretty much most people, but especially him. Yeah. This is why I'm telling you it's not a pretty story. But, you know, as my body started to break down mm-hmm. and my running started to slow and I couldn't run even a mile anymore, one day we were around the UCLA track mm-hmm. and where I used to like, train in my own mind train with like olympic athletes because they use the ucla track i had really now i was dragging so slow because (laughs) of the pain that i think i was just like i was walking pretty much and this man passed me and then he passed me again and i just stood there and i started crying and i knew I knew that whatever was dragging me forward, Mm -hmm. my ego, my, I can do it. My just push harder, all of that Mm -hmm. just, just crumbled. It just crumbled. I knew that I had hit a place from which I could stay there or I needed to build up like this man. I knew he was my teacher. Mm. I knew that he was the answer for me. So I slowed down and I said, can I, can I walk with you? Do you mind walking with me? And he goes, no, of course not. And you know, he had no problem. He was just going a little faster than a walk anyway. He slowed yeah. down. And I started asking him questions. How do you do it? What's going on? How do you show up every day? And he taught me. And he said, one step at a time. And he said, if you can walk, walk. If you can't walk, crawl. If you can't crawl, just move out and sit on a bench. And so I said to myself, you know, maybe I'll just go for, maybe I'll just go for a little walk in the mountains. Wow. Just get some air. Mm -hmm. And as I started walking, and I was always a hiker, Mm -hmm. but now seeing the hiking as all I could do, no longer an alternative to a day where I was not feeling strong. No longer just like something I did on a weekday, mm. on a day where I was feeling weak or on an off day. But the best I could do right now was just move through nature slow. Yeah. 
Yeah. It was the beginning, Roxy. It was the beginning. I Then I went again, and then I started moving a little faster, and then I said, well, what would it feel like? I wonder if I can maybe just run for like 10 seconds mm-hmm. without pain or maybe 20 seconds. And I realized that there was something very different for my body when I'm running on a soft, on dirt and in nature and on this ground we call Mother Earth. And I just started to make spiritual connections and I started to feel differently and my body started to get stronger. And I've never run a marathon in my life before I ran, and you know, a 50 kilometer race. That's incredible. So it was a combination of surrounding myself with people who, who gave me the understanding that it's about the process, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And you're not too old. And you're all of these things are setting examples for me, of course, working with my own coach. Mm-hmm. And um, it just was one, one step at a time. That is beautiful. And I, I, I think it's so um, incredible that you, you know, you, you had a very deep level of self-awareness to be able to realize, you know, this, this individual is, 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 is my teacher. There's a lesson here. Um, I think it's also beautiful that you, you, you subscribe to the lesson. You said, okay, I want to, I actually want to, I want to investigate, right? You didn't let just go over it on you, you know, and, and that ultimately is, you know, that was a pathway. Like you just beautifully shared to what would become, you know, another huge piece to your life and really who you are, right. As this ultra athlete, it's incredible. You know, you know what you're talking when you said explore or investigate is the Mm -hmm. word you use. I, I have found out through the years that the antidote, the opposite of fear Mm-hmm. which I have just as much as everyone else yeah. is curiosity. Yeah. It's not courage. It's not bravery because like, I don't know, you know, courage is like a result almost mm. for me. Yeah. You know, Love it. brave is something I become. Mm. Courage is something I show mm. that I can access in the process of being curious. Mm. If I can just, leverage curiosity if i can if i can really become curious then i've noticed that it it takes over the fear yeah yeah i was curious i was genuinely curious what who is this man yeah <laughs> who does he know that i don't know and you and you and and the thing that is also so important to to point out is that you went for it. You know, you think like we're all born c- curious, right? That's the beautiful part about being a child and youthful is this curiosity and this, you know, uh, the why. What? But why? But why? It's like this constant investigation. And you know, unfortunately, as as um, most grow older, that that starts to diminish. It starts to go away. You know, and that's where people get stuck and unhappy. But you know, it. it when you when you keep that curiosity active and you maneuver through your life with that curiosity like you you take the chance you investigate um it really does it 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 keeps you evolving into you know even if there's a consequence at the end of that you know um that consequence you know can end, like, maybe it's like a a business uh, venture that you embarked on because you were curious and you investigated and you wanted to, you know, see what would happen. And then there's a fail at the end of it, but that fail will most likely hold some valuable lesson or lessons that you need to then carry on to get you to that next, to that higher level. So it's, you know, I think it's, again, it's, it's wonderful that you, you leaned into your curiosity and, and you decided you made the choice to say, I, I, I'm going to, um, I mean, even, even the vulnerability in that, you know, like you said, you know, before that you're kind of walking around like, you know, like exactly like the, you know, I'm above. And then you're like, wait, I need to come down. And, uh, you know, no, I, ask- am down. I am down. I don't need to come down. <gasps> yeah. I, I, I wish for, I have this conversation with my children. Yeah. I wish for 
humans that they do it voluntarily mm. because when we don't, the universe will do it for us. So <laughs> it was no longer like I need to do this. That way we're voluntary. It was like, I'm down. I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> You're like to the man, help. <laughs> yeah, like please help me. Yeah, out about it. You know, That's I, incredible. I do want to. Um, I do want to narrow in on something you said though, hmm. which I think is such an important part of what we do, and something folks need to understand. Curiosity is a great starting point, mm-hmm. but unless you take action we're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. And this is something, you know, that's inherent in how you live and what you do. But a lot of folks need help with that because, you know, Brooke Castillo is a coach who, you know, she makes this distinction between massive action and passive action. Mm -hmm. And passive action is all the things we do on the way to making, you know, our goals come true, our dreams come true, our vision come true. We read, we go to school, we learn, we talk to people, we listen to podcasts. Um, And it feels like we're getting smarter. It feels like we're doing Doing something. something. (laughs) We're not changing our life. Yeah. You know? And, And this is what I hope more and more people understand. And this is what, um, coaches, yeah offer yeah is that understanding that unless you move into massive action mm. nothing's going to change one year yeah. from now you will be living the same future the default future you would have had yeah you know yeah. so so at the same time that i'm talking about being who you're being mm-hmm. it is very important to say okay i'm curious mm-hmm. Don't just read another book because no. <laughs> you need another book. Nobody around us. We are so overloaded <laughs> with information. Everybody's so smart in the head. Yeah. We don't need to read another book, another article, another anything. You know, I have a course that I've put out, mm-hmm. which is really very inexpensive compared to my one-on-one coaching. Mm-hmm. And my clients say like, why did you like, Price is so low. It's not good for your image. I'm like, because it's just information, you know? Now, there's tools in there. Yeah. There's practices if somebody yeah. wants to actually do them. Mm-hmm. But we know that 80% of courses go undone and unread. Yes. But one-on-one, when you're working with another human who holds only your agenda and is mm. all in, mm-hmm. okay? That's a whole other level of, al- of alchemy. That's a whole other level of magic. And it involves action. Mm. Massive action, understandably, people don't want to take it because 100% of the time it's in front of others. Yeah. And 90% of the time you fall on your face in front of others. So of course we don't want to do it. But there's just like no other way, like you said, to, you know, there's no other way to move forward. No, that's so good, Carolyn. I know, you know, that's that's a big theme to your coaching is taking your clients from, you know, this place of knowledge into action. And you're right, you know, it's like my again, being a very visual person, I'm imagining somebody in the kitchen, you know, you've got okay, you you got this recipe and you've got all the ingredients and they're all set up perfectly and you've got all the ingredients, the book, the podcast, the you know, all the content. But now you gotta put that shit on the stove. <laughs> that's <a> scary. <laughs> Now you got to make it all happen. Uh-huh. And the hesitation kicks in because what if you burn it? What if that, you know, what if you get it? Wrong? It's just that my mind is an art of like, and it's like, huh. man, put the shit on the stove. And if it gets burned, it's okay. Cause now, you know, to, to adjust the temperature, to do it different, but it true, doesn't true. happen. That meal is not going to come into fruition. Yes. So you <laughs> combine all those pieces with the, you know, the fire. And, you know, maybe another way to add to it is like the coaching, man. It's like, yeah, it's, 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 it's helping you to either, you know, to ignite the flame or it is the flame sometime, the coach, you know, but it's, you're so right that, you know, you cannot, I think a lot of people do get stuck in the consumption of, of the, the knowledge, you know, and the information. And sometimes I think that that could also hold one back because, you know, you feel like, uh, 
one can feel like as they're learning more and they're witnessing more on the outside, it's like, wait, am I good enough? Am I ready enough? Or do I have all the things? It's like, man, you, you gotta, yeah, you got, you know, you have to be willing. I have a, a campaign under black belt beauty called seek the fight. Mm-hmm. And where it was born from Carolyn was this idea that, you know, one of the things I know I've been really good at in my life is I've been willing to live in the arena and get punched in the face, get be put on my knees by the challenges that stand guard at my growth and the ideals that I hold for my life. And I get back up and then I throw a punch. I learn about who I am. I have learned about who I am in every punch that I've taken in life and continue to take, right? So my idea behind Seek the Fight is exactly that. I want you to move towards the fight. I want you to go after it, get uncomfortable, feel it, get punched in the face, be put on your knees. Good. Get back up. Watch yourself, witness yourself in this entire process because there's something really important about that there too. You know, self-respect, self-compassion, self-love, self-confidence. You're watching yourself. You know, I mean, I, I actually, it's a perfect bridge to want to ask you. I mean, Has that played a role for you in your life? Just witnessing Carolyn can, you know, move through everything that you've been moving through and continue to move through in your life, all the hard, all the adversities, all the challenges and who you have been in this process and, and what you've overcome. How has that, how has that played a role to, to what you feel about yourself, to your self-talk, um, to, to, you know, who you are in this moment today? Mm -hmm. Um, I think the best way to answer that is to, I'm going to reference a podcast that you had a few weeks ago with Ben Hardy. Oh, I love that. Right? Yeah. So great, right? Yeah. Where he, you both were really digging deep into how we assume we have a certain personality mm-hmm. and that personality is made of like I don't know cement and it's this you know unbreakable statue it's who I am yeah (laughs) it's fixed um you know it's just I learned through all those experiences that you're talking about but also through working with folks Mm -hmm. and and all kinds of practices. Some of them truly, I have to say, I don't want to call it religious, but spiritual. Yeah. You know, I have a strong morning practice that goes everywhere, like you do, you know, covers all the ground, but at its core, it's spiritual. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Meaning a connection with, yeah. in, in quietness with a higher source, right? All of that at some point had me realizing, not overnight, but mm-hmm. over time, yeah. okay. realizing that, you know, the, thinking that this is my personality is the easy fucking way out. <laughs> In my course, the Life Vault course, the yeah. first module is personality, practice versus personality. Why? Because basically it covers everything. You know, all the other teachings are based on that. If you if we can begin to understand this concept that our personality is not this thing that's made and it's unchangeable, just who we are and begin to understand that pretty much everything is a practice, everything. Then, you know, that's, that's the path right there. That's the path. Yeah. And what you're saying about seek the fight, people don't want to seek the fight because they feel they don't have the personality for it. Mm. Oh, I'm not that. I, I, I can't. I'm not a fighter. Mm. I'm not a, you know, I'm, I'm sensitive. I'm, you know, it's hard for me to get back up when I fall. It's this. Mm. It's, that. it's just the practice. Mm-hmm. It's just the practice. You are not afraid of it because now you've practiced it so much. Mm. So when you when you 
when you can see the fight, yeah, you get like that feeling in your stomach or whatever, but you don't get gripped by fear because you think that somebody's asking you to speak Chinese and you've never ever in your life studied Chinese. No, no it's so true. You're yeah. like, okay, I've done this before. I've practiced it. You know, y- y- you can move forward. For most of us, when we're asked to do something, it is like someone's asking us to speak Chinese. We have no clue. We have mm. no clue. We've never practiced it. We don't understand it. Yeah. But instead of saying, you know what? I've never practiced Chinese. I've never learned it. I can, but I haven't. Instead, mm-hmm. we say, oh my God, I can't believe I don't speak Chinese. My parents didn't teach it to me. How could I have been raised in a home where nobody spoke Chinese and now I have to like deal with this and pay the price and I'm so not good enough and what's wrong with me? No. (laughs) Oh, it's so perfect. I love that. It's so, it's so perfect. You know, and I, I just, um, the fight equals the challenge, the adversity. And I think that what has served me so well and is just this idea of pivoting what challenge really means to you in your mind. You know, it's literally challenge for me when I feel the challenge, I'm like, there's your cue to go, go in that direction, go in. So it's, it's a complete Whereas like challenges, like for a lot of people, it's like, oh, let's stay awake because there's uncomfortable, there's potential pain, all this stuff. But I've literally, you know, some of which came naturally because there were challenges in my childhood, you know, out of my control. Mm -hmm. So I became comfortable with challenge and maneuvering through it. And then um, a lot equal parts because I may, you know, I'm a path creator and I, Mm I, 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 I'm making sure that I'm finding challenges so that I can continue to grow in my life. So for me, challenges really become this idea. The fight is, is an opportunity and it's a complete pivot of, 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 of what this means that supports the ability to go forward. Because like you said, for sure, there are times where, you know, whatever the thing is, it's like, oh man, I'm getting the feelings. I'm uncomfortable, the fear that it, but you're right. It's that practice, which I th- I love that that's, you know, again, you're such a great writer, um, practice personality. It's like, it's that repetition work that re- it's like the gym, that repetition work that that's fortifies, it. right? It's that's amazing. It. And yeah. this is where I think that, you know, your particular brand of being a fitness, mm-hmm. like really master and expert and the mindset they, they inform each other really fluidly and really well, beautifully. You, thank you. And I think that there's so much alignment with you because you're an, you're an athlete. And, you know, I so I'm a holistic high performer, right? We have high performer. Yeah, I'm not that. I'm a holistic high performer. And the reason for that, what that means is you. I don't want to just be killing it in one zone. And there's no such thing as one zone. It goes back to the coach you were talking about, like, your the state of your home is impacted by the state of your business the state of your love life is impacted by the state of your health like everything is connected so for me when i think about high performance it has to be you investing uh, in in all these areas to really be able to perform at the highest level it's a system that is in constant um you know, the uh, connection of, of, of all these pieces together of, in our lives. And so you as an athlete at a very high level athlete taking, you know, everything that it takes to be a high level athlete and then how you can integrate that into your business, into your life, into the woman that you, am, that, that you are, I feel like, you know, there's another connection for us because it's like you said, you know, you have this I'm an athlete and a, you know, artist mindset coach and how it really pulls it all together. I, you know, I feel like we're sisters in that territory because for sure. Yeah, for sure. And you know, this, the, the physical athletic side of my life informs my coaching all the time. I was in a session with a client of mine who is very high achieving and, um, you know, he owns a sports league without getting too specific. Mm-hmm. And um, he's in a place where he's really at a, at, at, a, at a threshold. And he said to me, man, 
how am I going to do this right now? You know, he's in a really a very difficult place and he's been there Mm -hmm. for a long time. He's getting tired. Yeah. So I can access mile 35. (laughs) (laughs) I'm where he is, you know? Yes. And I said, well, can I give you just a little bit of advice from my, you know, from my other life that might be relevant? He said, yeah. And I said, first of all, this is the time to just stay in the game. Mm. It's not the time to be like, why am I not going so fast? Why am I tired? Why is my leg cramping? Just put one foot in front of the other. Just stay in the game. Yeah. You know, my own coach, my own running coach Mm -hmm. would say, look, Carolyn, the person who wins is not the person who goes the fastest. It's the one who slows down the least. Mm, That's wonderful. Beautiful. What does that mean Mm. to you, to my client? I asked, what is it going to take for you to slow down the least? Yeah. Okay. Because what we do is we drive ourselves really hard and then we fall. Right. We're gone. Right. It's no longer about slow. You're out of the game. Right. You're, 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 you DNF, you don't, don't finish. They pull you from the race. Which yeah. Is okay. And then the last thing I shared with him, I said, you know, you know how we do it? We don't start a race and say, oh, I'm going to run 50 miles and I'm going to run 12 hours and I'm going to do this. We say, I'm going to go to the next aid station. Mm. How long is that? Six miles, eight miles. I could do that. You prepare and you go. Yeah. Right now, you just need to figure out where the next aid station is. That's mm-hmm. it. And get to the next aid station. And you know what? He was so like, it all, of course, he's also a sports person himself, but it all really dropped in for him. This was a very explicit way I use the other part of my life, but yeah. it's implicitly, it's in my coaching yeah. all the time, as I'm sure it is you know, also yours all the yeah, time. I mean, it ha- you know, I, I own lifeismysport.com <laughs> because <laughs> it was incredible that it was available, but because over the years, people would ask me, what do you compete in? You know, I train jujitsu, I lift weights. I have many different modalities of movement, you know, all of which um, yoga, they all surfing, they all give me It's like, yes, I want the physiological benefits, the health benefits, the aesthetic benefits of all these different modalities. But honestly, Carolyn, what I really, really am going for in each of them is I want the mindset pieces. I want those ingredients that, you know, the surfing, how to, how to be fluid, how to be flow, how to be patient, yoga, how to breathe, how to work through discomfort, just differentiate discomfort from pain, weightlifting, you know, feeling strong, my running having the endurance for life. I mean, jujitsu, you, you have a, a you know, a, a 200 something man, pound man on you and your gi and your sweat. Good. Get comfortable in that uncomfortable state and don't lose your mind in the process. I, so when people ask me, what are you trained for? I'm like, well, I'm training for life because all of these are necessary, especially for the life that I am living and the life that I am creating. So it makes but that was a beautiful uh, example that you just gave with your client. It doesn't come as any to us as any surprise to me that this is going to transfer naturally into your coaching because it just it's to be to be an athlete on any level, really like just, but to be consistent with, you know, uh, using your physical body where you also always have to combine your mind. Right. I mean, if anything, sport, I think more than anything is, is mind. Right. So I'm a big UFC MMA fighter girl, right. It's a game of mind, man. You got two fighters that are super level. The, the one who wins, it's a game of inches. It's the mindset. For the most part, right? And so I imagine you on these crazy, amazing races and you're at what, mile 40? Like what? This is mind over here. <laughs> I don't want anything to do with that kind of race, Carol. <laughs> but well, if you were my coach, I want to listen to you at mile 40 because that shit is gnarly. <laughs> How are you doing it? <laughs> so I have a question for you. Yes. When are you writing this book? <laughs> This one that you just literally, you just laid out in 12 chapters, 12 sports. 
and making that connection. Oh and, my goodness. I mean, that's a book that like all you have to do is just <laughs> block an hour out of your day and that book will write itself the way you just explained it to me. Oh, you move my heart. I'm, I'm on my cycle. So I might just cry. Look. I, you know, well, books are definitely in the queue. There's a couple oh, of book. them. This that book. book. Okay. Well, there you go. This book I, right here. Yeah. This book um, right here is, is, it is written already. You just need to, I mean, I'm high. I need to hire you as my coach to get me through this book. <laughs> That's what's happening offline. <laughs> this book is ready to go. Just uh, literally uh, like gave me the, the synopsis of it. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Well, you know how it is when you're, you're juggling all kinds of things. And I mean, I know that the books are, they're coming They're you know, it's like the, the setup and I appreciate you, you know, absorbing it that way and then gifting it back to me that way. That's, um, it's, it's, it, it, it really, it makes me emotional. I, you know, the thing is, it's all real, you know, it's all authentic and it's, um, oh. yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That's, that's why I'm saying the book is pretty much written itself. All you have to do is, you know, kind of give, put the time aside to give birth to it and the put time. it out in the world, you know? Some, yeah. books, some books we write to support what we do. Mm -hmm. one, the one you just shared yeah. is, it just is, you know, it's like, it's already existent. You just need to yeah. sort of, put it out into the world for yeah. no other reason than it should just be out there. And, um, okay. you know, I mean, it will have benefits, obviously you'll have a great book, but it's pretty much written itself. I love that. Thank you. It takes a, yeah. I, you know, when I first came up with life was my sport, I thought about a playbook, you know, and it's, I think that's uh, the interesting part of being an artist and an athlete and having, you know, it's like you have, there's a lot of different ideas and you have to just, I think for me personally, I'm curious to how you feel about this, but actually it goes so perfect with one step at a time, you know, because it's so easy to get overwhelmed. Everything's important. Everything matters. And, and then all of a sudden nothing gets done because you're just overwhelmed. So it's like, okay. Cause I, I have a saying called inches make the mile. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, how can we just, let's just make one, let, let's get this ebook done right now. <laughs> Let's get this next, you know, coaching program, whatever it is, you know, and then we move into the next thing. And I think for me, what I do to know what to put in front of the other, um, I mean, there's a couple strategies, but I, but ultimately it's, it's what's lighting me up the most right now that I feel like it's going to give me the most energy to be able to be consistent with this project to see it through to the end. Right. Cause then, then this happens and I go all in and I'm like, okay. And then I'm done. Move on to the next thing. But mm -hmm. yeah, there's a lot in the orbit. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. I'm, I would argue that everything is not important and everything doesn't matter. I would argue, but perhaps not on this podcast right now. <laughs> oh, no, I, Carolyn, I love it. You know, that's, a, that's why, first of all, thank you. I don't want to be right all the time. I want to be called out, especially by individuals like you that are intellects who are, you know, higher learners who have wisdom. And are you kidding? It's a gift to have that kind of message come back at me, you know, and have me rethink and look at this deeper. Mm -hmm. I, one thing that I'm not a fan of is lazy thinking. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> don't just settle on that peel the layer back blanket statements all that stuff you have no idea i can't i roll my eye it's my father's fault i can, I can imagine <laughs> actually a, a, a kind of you know brutal side of you coming out if you're ever faced with that in people <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can imagine i'm guessing that there's a side of you that's just going to be like i don't have time for this like, <laughs> and just walking out the door <laughs> 
it's a bit of a roll of the eye, you know, I'm like, Oh God, I can't, you know, but yeah, well, I just think it's, you know, it's really easy to rest and just be like, uh, you know, sit there, but it's like, it goes back to the investigation. It goes back to the curiosity. It's all about growth mindset. And, you know, if you're always, you know, just settling on this idea, this story, this, you know, and you're never questioning and, and also never allowing yourself to be open, to be, to be wrong, then you're never going to, you know, I'm more addicted to the growth than I am to being right or to the story or to the thing, you know? So that, that is, um, yeah, that was a beautiful gift that you just shared. And I'm going to talk more about it with you. <laughs> okay. So back so- to you. This podcast is about you. <laughs> um, I'm so grateful. I want to honor your time. I want to, um, there's a couple of things I'd like to do with all of my guests. Um, I would like to have, first of all, more conversations with you, you know, off off the podcast, but certainly on the podcast again. I love what you're about. I love, you know, I want to support you in all the ways that I can. I think, you know, in the world of uh, coaching, you know, it's a, it's an interesting time because there's just so much of it, you know, and I'm not judging on any level of, you know, to each his own, like coach, 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 coach. And then I think, you know, there are ones that just stand out from a very authentic place, uh, like you do to me and I know to your people. Um, so I, I'm really excited to have more conversations with you. One thing that I want to ask you before we move into, um, a couple of uh, questions that will wrap up this episode is, is there something that you wish you were asked more of and you have not been asked um, or you would like to speak on and have live in this conversation? Yeah, I think that we, we touched on it earlier on and maybe we can talk about it more deeply another time. I would like more conversations around what aging means, what it means to age beautifully what again you call 360 degree of beauty you know what does that mean yeah what does that mean at 40 at 50 at 60 at 70 you know what do we as women um what are we modeling for the next generation for our daughters for our sons you know and the connection between integrative health and beauty yeah you know between like, um, I know that, you, you know, you've got training, you've got fuel, you've got all beauty, you've got all of these things along with like mindset and mental training in your model, right? Um, a lot of people don't have those three things. They're like, okay, I want mindset, I want mental training, but they're not connecting it to the air you breathe, the food you eat, the movement in your body. It's very hard to age well mm-hmm. if you're not understanding that the you know it's a holistic exercise and that integration is what beauty is about as we get older. Because believe me, we slow down, it doesn't matter how like right. badass we are, you know, in our 30s and 40s, we slow down, things start to sag, the beauty starts to fade, your makeup doesn't even sit well anymore. Totally. You don't know what it was, you know but you can still be beautiful. So, you know, that's something I would love for us and for just more women to explore. I love that. Uh, that sounds like a live IG conversation um, that I would love to have with you. I do want to say, and I, you know, I, I don't probably need to say this, um, especially to my audience, because everyone knows it's as real as it gets with me always. Uh you know, this was, we've spoke before the podcast, but this was the first time that I, I, I got to, you know, I've been able to see you in virtual real life, you know, (laughs) which is almost like real life these days. And, um, immediately just from taking you in, I think, you know, the word that comes to mind is essence. Mm -hmm. You, your essence, just um, first reaction for me is this is a robust, healthy, beautiful woman. So whatever you're doing in your life, from the food you eat, to the things you listen to, to the things you don't listen to, to the skincare, to all of the pieces, the my, you're doing something really right, Carolyn, because there's a, 
there's a beauty to you that genuinely, you know, it, it's, it's, it's like, you know, it's a beauty that is felt, right? Um, I, I really do love, you know, it, everything again connects with everything. So when you feel good inside, and how you look on the outside does affect that, right? So it's like how you're managing yourself. That affects how you feel in the inside and vice versa. And that affects your performance. That's why there's, you know, look great, feel great, perform great in the brand. But, you know, I just, I, I love this conversation. I love that you integrated uh, this into the podcast, even if it's more bite-sized right now. And we'll elaborate it on, you know, uh, a, a live IG and and another podcast together. But um <laughs> You're already leading by example. Is what I'm Thank, you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank yeah. you. So, you know, we all know how to be functional, but how to be vital, that's a different story. And I think that's what I'm zeroing in on is just how can we, how can we be more vital? You know, great. You're super functional. Wonderful. There's another level. And, you know, what you call essence is really about being vital, being alive, you know, and uh, that there's a lot of pieces to that, as you know. But yeah. thank you. Bro. Yeah. You're, yeah. No, absolutely. Okay. So one of the questions that I love to ask all my guests is if you had a magic wand and this magic wand could give the masses one positive habit that would have the largest ripple effect, positive ripple effect in their life, what would that be? It could be anything from mindset to a morning ritual to something Mm -hmm. they eat, anything. Oh man, that's a really good question. And I mean, listen, morning rituals have changed my life, but if I have to choose one thing, I would say Experiment with being other focused and watch your life change. So just get out of yourself in every way you can to show up for someone else. Maybe pick up the phone and have a conversation in your work somehow, slow down to sit with somebody, give something to someone, just and watch your life change. And by the way, it's addictive because, you know, it's one of those things that the more you do it, the more your life changes for the better. And the easier things become, the more relaxed you become, the less like self-conscious you are. And you're like, oh, this is like, this is kind of like a magical thing. Yeah. That's what I, I love that. the world. No, it's beautiful. Absolutely. I can just feel you. Yeah. You get more fulfillment in life from that. So everybody get to work now. (laughs) Where's that wand? (laughs) I love it. Okay. So the final piece to this amazing conversation that I'm so grateful to have had with you is uh, my rapid fire words. So you do not need to be rapid in your response. You can elaborate as deep and as long as you would like. The idea is just to give you these words and whatever comes top of mind and top of heart, I would like you to share. Okay, let's do it. Okay. First word is love. Wow. This <laughs> sounds terrible, but the first thing that came to my mind was me. <laughs> that is perfect on this podcast. <laughs> I mean, it sounds selfish, but I do think that I'm all about love. And I do love myself and I do love others. And my work is about love. And I try to go back to love um, when I fall off the wagon, which is like daily. So (laughs) yeah, that's the word that came top of mind. (laughs) Oh, it's, it's perfect. I literally just created a post the other day um, with this. uh, I was, deeply thinking as I always am. And I was like, you know, cause love is everything to me. And I, I was like, you know, love, love is a high performance tool. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like, it's where self-compassion, self-respect, personal integrity live. Right. right. It's like, it's I'm like, I'm going to write it down because I'm going <laughs> to steal it from you, but I'm always going to give you credit. Love is a high performance tool. 
Yes, isn't it amazing? Well, yeah. I mean, I think about you and your races. You're at mile 30. What's getting you through? It's like, Carolyn, I love you, girl. Get we can do this. Right. I'm just trying, I'm imagining, you know. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. Um okay, so next word is fear. Mm. Yeah. You know, it's a phrase that came to mind. I have it. I have fear. It's just, it's like a, it's an understanding that I have come to terms with. And in coming to terms with it, it's been very liberating, you know? And it's also helped me, of course, with my coaching, just to know that fear is just going to be my companion forever. And that's okay. I have it. It's there. You know, is it in the driver's seat where it used to be all the time? No. It's like, it's more often in the, like the child seat buckled in, like (laughs) yakking away, asking, are we there yet? Are we there yet? So it's more like that now. (laughs) I have fear. (laughs) I'm going to imagine that in my (laughs) car. I mean, shut up. (laughs) whole thing like be fearless. Uh, I know. I know. I'm not fearless. Fear is there. So am I. I still move on. I still act. I still do. I still live. But I have fear. I love it. (laughs) You're just the boss of it. I love it. (laughs) Mostly. Settle down. (laughs) Settle down. Right. Exactly. It helps to have been a parent. But yes. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Okay. Next word is confidence. Hmm. Confidence comes from competence, okay? Mm -hmm. So the word that came to mind is competence. Um, I work with young adults whose parents reach out to me and they say, you know, we work with our kid. Well, they're not kids, they're young adults to transition into Mm -hmm. the world. Um, They're lacking some confidence. And, you know, I know well enough that True confidence doesn't come from like the, uh, oh, the participation medals mm-hmm. they used to give to my kids at like soccer games that used to drive me crazy. I'm like, why are you giving them a medal for participating? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a fan of that either. Tell them, yeah. job, tell them good job for participating. Don't give them yeah. a medal. Right. So confidence, true confidence, grounded confidence comes from practice developing competence Mm -hmm. and knowing that, okay, I've got a measure of competence. And from that, you know, like, um, just being on a podcast, I didn't know you and I have barely talked. Right. And it's like, you wanted it that way. You said, I want it to be totally impromptu. Yeah. My daughter was leaving and I said, I'm a little nervous. She goes, what are you nervous about? I said, well, I mean, you know, just going to show up and talk. She goes, mom, you just show up eight hours a day. You have no idea what, like with people, <laughs> like anyone's going to say, and you do this. I'm like, no, but actually you're fucking right. <laughs> it's, it's like the same thing. That gave me confidence. I love that. I was able to access a level of competence I've developed through practice. Yes. Yes. I love that. I love that your daughter coached you. <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> Wonder where she gets it from. <laughs> oh, that's so beautiful, Carolyn. Oh my goodness. Okay. Next word is passion. Mm. Look, the word that came to my mind is myth. Okay. Mm. I know that Passion is like a big buzzword, Mm -hmm. especially for the younger generation, younger than me. I know from my own experience Mm -hmm. and working with just a lot of people that passion is something we develop when we become good at something. There's a great book out there for anyone who wants to really dive deeper into what I'm saying, because I know it won't resonate Mm -hmm. with many. It's called So Good They Can't Ignore You by Cal Newport, who also has written Digital Detox, also Deep Work, right? So, you know, he is really up there Mm -hmm. in terms of intelligence and, 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 and 
research and he's a professor and he's so smart. So it's not just me saying it, you know, we become passionate when we become really good at something, when we develop career capital, you know, we've done, we've done so much work that, you know, our, what, what's in our heart, which Mm -hmm. you can call passion Mm -hmm. mixes with our experience, with our results and creates these great opportunities for us. And suddenly we're like, we come across as passionate, Mm -hmm. you know, was I passionate about fashion? No, I just wanted to work and make money and get independence from my like traditional family. And, yeah. like, you know, make a cup some, I, I saw it as the way to being independent as a female mm-hmm. coming from a Middle Eastern family. Mm-hmm. Okay. Fashion was the way Then I became good at it. Then I had expertise. Mm-hmm. So people would come to me, you know, I don't know if you are like passionate about makeup, you Mm -hmm. know? So it's like passion is great, but it's kind of to to be interested in things is great. Mm -hmm. You can become interested in a lot of things if you're curious Mm -hmm. and you will become passionate about the thing that you're good at and people acknowledge you for it and you're able to serve you know, mm-hmm. from yeah. and you're able to impact the world from, then suddenly it's your passion. You know, I love you it. I'm passionate about coaching. Did I think 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, I was going to be a coach? I didn't know what it was. So <laughs> that's mm-hmm. amazing. I love that perspective. It's a flip and it's beautiful. And it, it, it's like, I feel it. Yeah. You know, the more that you do this work, um, the more that the passion I think is, is, is just continuously fortified and expanded, you know, it's like the flames just keep, you know, even when, especially almost because of the challenges that come with whatever it is, you know, that you're doing, but you're just like, ah, it just builds, you know, I mean, even if you think of relationship, a lot of times it's that challenge that can (laughs) make the passion, right? (laughs) I'm not saying all challenge, you know, it's like everything has to be hard, but it's like, it's just uh, (laughs) not saying that, but yeah, let's just leave it there. That was beautiful. (laughs) Um, Okay. A couple more words. So next one is courage. Courage. Yeah. Courage is really, um, the word that came to my mind was gateway. You know, courage is a gateway. Yeah. It's, we have to go through it. So again, I think that it's good to, um, it's, Good to kind of bring alive your curiosity. Yeah. Curiosity will lead, hopefully, to the courage necessary. Mm-hmm. Courage is a gateway. You can't get to the other side without going through courage. You can't. It. No, it's so true. I, I, I'm backing that up because that's true in my life for sure. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I wish there was a different way because yeah. I would talk to my clients. I, I want them. I want them to have. Unlike you, I want them to have the easiest way possible. <laughs> like, I'm like, dude, if I could make it easier, I would. Like, yeah. when they beat the shit out of themselves, I'm like, if that worked, yeah, I'm beating the shit out of you, yeah, would double, it yeah. So, no. and same here. You gotta go. You gotta go through that pathway, that gateway of courage. Yeah, no, I, I agree. It's, it's a, it's a very important supportive tool. Um, period, period. Next word, resilience. 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 Yeah. You know, I got these two words. It happens to me. Mm -hmm. Resilience is, is again, a result. Mm -hmm. So you know, you read, there's a book out there called Mindset by Carol Dweck, which I'm sure you've read. It's such a seminal book. And she talks about resilience. But resilience isn't a thing that you can just develop. It comes from having a growth mindset. Mm -hmm. So resilience happens from falling, from failure, from, you can stop that from happening. A lot of parents are doing that with their children. They're stopping their children literally from becoming resilient by building these, you know, towers, ivory towers around them, by letting them have any experience of failure. So you could stop resilience from happening, but if you don't stop it, 
Yeah. Life, life will, I think, generally make you resilient, generally. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, I agree with that, that it's a, it's a result. And uh, it's one of my favorite words. And it's um, certainly something that in my life is, 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 it's a constant, you know, it's like, I'm always, I'm wanting to increase my resilience, right? And the pathway yeah. to that is moving towards those fights, you know? Yeah, for and, sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, final word. Final word is excellence. Excellence. Excellence is awesome. It really is. You know, it really is. At the same time that I'm always coaching to slow down, don't be, don't give into perfectionism. Good enough is good enough. You know, excellence is is so fucking awesome because, you know, it's about mastery. It's not mastery as having arrived. It's kind of this infinite game. You could see how it can just keep you going for the rest of your life. Yeah. You know, there's no end to it. No. I love things like that. I love things that are, you know, again, to quote Simon Sinek, you know, he has, he has a book called the infinite game where he goes into this. There are games in life that are finite, mm-hmm. you know, like, and, and you know, any of this, the games that you take part in like MMA or sports or whatever mm-hmm. a football game, it's got a beginning, a middle and an end. Mm-hmm. And there are infinite games. Yeah. And those games, um, it takes a different mindset and excellence is a driver in those games. You know, if you're always like going for excellence, mm-hmm. you're always feeling vital and energized and curious because there's more. I love that. Yes. And there's a huge difference between perfectionism and excellence. And I know that there could be a confusion sometimes, but you know, excellence is really, it's, I love the way you just framed it. It's a driver. It's, it's truly for me, it's a, it's a process. Excellence is a process. It's like, doesn't mean you're winning all the time. In fact, no, but it's what you just said. It's the driver and everything. That was beautiful. Yeah. You're incredible. I want to, I want to honor you. I want to appreciate you. I want to say thank you. Um, you're an absolute contributor, you know, just for existing the way that you exist in this life, you know, you're to the clients that you coach to, to everyone that you come across because it's really who you are and how you move through this life. So it's been such a privilege to be here with you, to take more of you in, to share you with the world. And I, I I would love to, and this will all be in the show notes. If you can, um, leave our listeners with the best way to stay connected with you for those who want to work with you. Your programs will be in the show notes as well. But yeah, Mm -hmm. before that, just thank you so much, Carolyn. You're incredible, truly. Thank you. Um, It's been really, for me too, a very fun time. And you're obviously somebody that a person. Oh no, I lost you. Are you there? Oh no. Can speak to an open minded. Are you there? Oh, I we can went, hear you. <laughs> okay, we totally got cut off. So I'm going to have to bring you back in. That was so weird. Um, hold on. The, it's like glitching, but let's keep talking and hear. Okay. Okay. I was, saying, I was just saying thank you to you as well. And um, hold on. I'm going to bring us back in because for them, it's easier for them to cut. Ready, <laughs> set. Okay. Thank you to you, Roxy, for this really beautiful conversation. And, um, and I look forward to continuing and exploring together. Uh, I am on social media um, on and off, but, you know, mostly on now. Um, on Instagram, Carolyn Mabubi Coach, and Facebook, Carolyn Mabubi Coach, and LinkedIn as well. And the best way to find me is really through my website and send me a little note. And I always respond. I'm very responsive. Um, pretty simple. I think that's the best way. I have a course out called the Life Vault Course, uh, which I've made a special offer for your clients that Perfect. will be included. And lovely. That's how you find me. Thank you. Thank you. All of that will be in the show notes again. And Carolyn, thank you so much again. This is definitely a to be continued on and off podcast. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks, Rock. All right. Thank you.
Bye. Bye, everybody. (laughs) Thanks so much for tuning into this episode, you guys. If you loved it, please share it on your social. Throw it up on your Instagram stories and tag me. I'm at Black Belt Beauty. I am also at Roxy Look, R-O-X-Y-L-O-O-K. I love connecting with you guys. This is a conversation that I want to just continue growing with you guys. So if you feel inspired to hit me up, do so in that space. I always enjoy hearing from you. If you'd like to support this podcast, you can do so by rating it and reviewing it via iTunes. It's such supportive help, you guys. It really helps the visibility of this podcast. So I appreciate and thank you in advance for doing that. And last but not least, if you you are interested in starting your own podcast or perhaps you already have one and you need help with you know editing your audio and the production of it I cannot recommend my producers enough resonate recordings you guys they are the bomb I rely on them they are an absolute supportive tool to me and my podcast so check them out and let them know that Black Belt Beauty sent you and on that note you guys I'm signing off with all my love and always looking forward to catching you on the next